And Scott Casper, Take Down Wrestling. Our opportunity to cover the sport continues this time. We head to Virginia and the great Commonwealth that is, the home of the Cavaliers. Jim Harshaw has been long been a friend of ours anyway, and he joins us now in the Nike hot seat. Jim, how are you? I'm great, Scott. How are you doing? I'm good, buddy. I was so encouraged when um, I've been witness to uh, the growth of your your blog, your video cast as well, and audio cast where you interview some of the best people in the world of business that have come from wrestling, lessons learned on the mat and put forward in, in life and in business. And you're proving out that you can't get pinned when you're on top. Welcome to yeah, the show. Yeah, that's right. Talk to us a little bit about wrestling with greatness in the podcast because it's 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 something I think that's been a long time coming. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you well know, and as the the viewers well know, that there's just so many amazing wrestlers out there who who have have gone on to do great things, amazing things in the world, and. And I think that we as wrestlers uh, sometimes don't realize the skills and talents and ability and, and life training that we've received. So, so I'm interviewing these guys and sort of pulling out sort of the lessons that they learned in wrestling and how they've applied them to their life. And, and my sort of value proposition is I help motivated former wrestlers get clear on their goals and take massive action to lead their ideal life. And I do that by, by bringing on these amazing people who share their stories, share their stories of, of failure and struggle, as well as success and wealth and, and uh, achieving great things in the world. So it's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun, and certainly the listeners are, are beneficiaries, but uh, I am as well. I get to talk to all these guys, and it's, been, uh, it's just been great. And that, it's a wonderful thing to, to be able to dive into those minds. You talk about clarity on how to set effective goals. Wrestlers are encouraged by their coaches, by their uh, parents and those uh, influential in their lives to set objectives and eventually set goals as well. Is that what you're finding is a, a common commonality between those that are so successful uh, that come from wrestling? Are you finding goal-oriented guys to be uh, some of the most successful? Absolutely. Very goal-oriented, very driven. But here's the most interesting thing that I've found with these successful people. It's, you know, as wrestlers, we all have the work ethic, right? We're all driven. We're all tough. We can work in uncomfortable situations. Uh, we can push through pain and discomfort. We, we can do those things, but that's kind of putting the cart before the horse. Um, but what I've noticed that these guys have done is they, they're willing to pause, right? They're willing to hit the pause button on their life and, and put the things in place that need to be there first in order for them to use their work ethic. So we have this work ethic, but if but if we just start diving into to whatever goal it is that we want to set and, and we start, start working, you know, we may be digging our hole in the wrong spot. But I call it the productive pause. And the productive pause is basically, you know, stopping, reflecting, figuring out exactly what you need. It's sort of this productive pause is guided by specific questions and, and figuring out what you need to do to be successful and then you, then you attack. So the, the first thing is really, you know, these guys know what their values are. They know what's important to them. So that's kind of step one. And then step two is they set goals that align with these values. And then step three is they create an environment of excellence, I call it, where they're, they surround themselves with the right people. They use the right positive self-talk. You know, they're reading the right books. They're doing these things in order for them to then – follow through because we have follow through as wrestlers then we you know they execute so it's kind of this process that i've seen it's been really interesting i just interviewed uh admiral kevin donegan he's uh, he's a three-star admiral he's one of the most powerful me uh, men in the united states navy and he he oversees the entire middle east of the u.s navy and he emphasizes pausing and stopping and carving out time in your life to focus on your relationships, to focus on your health, to to read, to think. Uh, and, and that's kind of the commonality that I've seen with all these guys. You know, it's interesting. You used the uh, phrase, or you were, I'll paraphrase, you talked about digging a hole. Wrestlers dig holes, uh, and, and, and not literally, but figuratively. They are very good at digging holes. But where do you dig the hole? Where's the most effective place to to to? Uh, put the tip of the shovel to get the most impact for the whole dug. 
And it seems like uh, a lot of our, our, our very good wrestlers sometimes forget where to put the tip of the spade. And uh, it's interesting that you would use that analogy. And I think in, in most part, it's, it's very true in all aspects of life. So I like the idea of pausing, reassessing, and then your complement of positive words, uh, positive terminologies, and surrounding yourself with, with not yes people, but people who are willing to challenge you to be even better. And I really like what you're doing here because uh, you're bringing a lot of this to the forefront and wrestling as a sport, most sports do, need a, a common uh, or have a common need. And I think that's for praise in the right way to encourage positive results. Agree? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, every sport, you know, you, you get value from, from I think every sport and every activity. I have four children who do everything from piano and guitar to wrestling and football and soccer and baseball and ballet and, and gymnastics. And, and there's value in all of those. But, you know, I'm preaching to the choir here, but <laughs> the value that you get from wrestling, and I realize this more now as a father than, than ever before in my life, as now as a, as a father and a coach, the value that you get from wrestling in, in the – just the uh, you know the the lifelong benefit that you get from from actually participating in the sport at, at, at any level at any level and no matter how good or how bad you were if you stepped onto the center of a mat and faced another person you you've learned the lessons that you need to learn for from wrestling wrestlers for the most part are motivated people today in Waterloo Iowa two very motivated and successful people will meet one is Donald Trump running for president the front runner of the Republican Party. The other, one of the winningest coaches of all time, Olympic gold medalist Dan Gable. These two have long wanted to meet each other, but it's taken years for this to happen. Um, what is it about successful people when they do meet? It seems as if it's uh, two magnets that actually do attract each other. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a lot like wrestling. You know, To be successful at anything you've got to work hard. I mean, everybody looks for the shortcuts, right? Everybody wants the, the get rich quick scheme or, or, or the shortcut or, or figuring out, you know, uh, an easier way to be successful. But when you talk to successful people, they tell you about the grind. They tell you about the obstacles. You know, I just talked to Lee Kemp, uh, interviewed him and he's going to be on the show here soon. And, and we look at Lee Kemp, you know, he's a, one of five Americans to be in the international wrestling hall of fame. You know, three-time na world uh, national champion, three-time world champion, and and you go, ah, oh, wow, well, he was just whatever. He was just a good athlete, or he just had great coaching, or he just had this or that. Lee Kemp has one of the most amazing backstories you'll ever hear in the sport of wrestling. It's amazing where he came from in his upbringing. So, and I share all that, and in, in, um, he shares all that in the in the interview. But you know, when you have these successful people that get together. They have these similar shared experiences. They know that the other person's been through the grind and had to overcome significant obstacles to get there. So I think that's the same sort of attraction that that a you know, wrestler, uh, any any wrestler that meets another wrestler, you know, if you've never met each other before, you have that instant bond. And I think it's it's pretty similar. And I do want to be clear: Donald Trump was a wrestler, and I can understand his admiration of Gable on many levels. And I think we can also, uh, you know, pass that admiration back the other way as well. Donald Trump has been successful at a uh, majority of the things he's ever put himself uh, uh, to do, to task, and uh, he's done an outstanding job. We're talking with Wrestling with Greatness podcast founder, a uh, guy that understands that there's more to wrestling than just wins and losses. And it's Jim Harshaw. He's at the University of Virginia, the home of the Cavaliers. The fall trees are changing, Jim, and perhaps it's a, a great time to change attitudes and change direction. One of the ways that people can do it is with your website, jimharshaw.net. What do you offer people? Yeah, so we got the podcast, but with each podcast, there's a, a free download, a downloadable action plan from every single podcast. Um, so there's... Uh, gosh, I'm on uh, episode 25 is going to be released here shortly, but uh, I think about 20 of these episodes I actually have action plans for, maybe more than 20. But also, I've distilled uh, I've distilled everything down from from all of these interviews and and identified the eight habits of of highly successful former wrestlers. So if you go to the homepage jimharshaw.net. 
there's a place where you can just enter your name and uh, email in the box and it's a free download. You get access not only to the eight habits of highly successful former wrestlers, but every action plan that I've created as well as a goal setting worksheet. So so there's a, there's tons of free resources. Of course, the podcast is free. Uh, everything on the website is free. So it's, uh, it, it's a tremendous value. I've gotten great feedback. I mean, some of the feedback that I've gotten from from just some of the really the bigger names in the sport has has been really neat. You know, I had Jake Herbert on the podcast pretty early on, and he's one of the most avid listeners. He's probably listened to more show, probably just about every show, if not just about every show. Um, Charlie Brenneman is another one. Charlie the Spaniard. He was a you know wrestler at Lock Haven and uh, former UFC. He's a UFC veteran, but he's a, a huge fan of the show. I mean, some of these guys now. You know they've been on my show, but they're now huge fans of the show, and they listen to every single episode. Matt Lindland's another one. I like the idea that um, that these guys who have reinvented themselves, Lindland has reinvented himself, Charlie has reinvented himself, and so has uh, Jake Herbert. Herbert, most notably, uh, uh, a huge star out of the Wisconsin experience at the at the uh, World Team Trials, came up as the oldest and uh, perhaps one of the most dedicated at that event. Did. Did his the results that he achieved there? Did that surprise you, knowing what you knew uh, about uh, Jake? You know what's interesting about Jake and, and Andy Robat? So these guys have they have a system, right? You look at successful people, and they have routines, they have systems, right? A lot of them, you know, you talk to successful business people, and and they have a system, a way of going about their day. They have morning routines, and they have weekly routines, and monthly routines, and and when you identify this routine or this system that helps you to be successful, you can replicate it and, and tweak it and make it better and change it You know, as new information comes in. You update that system and that routine, right? Well, Jake and Andy, I mean, these guys have that. So, no, if you ask me, how, did it surprise me? No, not at all. They've got a pretty neat system going. You recently With that, they got their base wrestling system. And they, the base wrestling system is working. It's growing as well. You recently spoke in Charlottesville at TEDx. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I was uh, invited. Actually, I, I, there was a sort of an open mic night uh, where 25 of us uh, had the opportunity to speak. And, and I, I, I won the, the fan vote. I think there were 500 or so people there. And I won the fan vote to, uh, to, be, uh, to speak at the main TEDx event, which there's about 1,000 people there. Uh, it's one of the uh, top one in the top 1% of largest TED events in the world. And so it was just an opportunity to, to share uh, a message that I have deep in my heart and, and, and it's called why I teach my children to fail. But it's really, you know, it's partly about parenting, but it's more about, you know, my experience as a wrestler. You know, I failed for many, many years before I finally got on the All-American, you know, on the, on the podium there uh, in 1999, my senior year at, at University of Virginia. And um, so, so yeah, it was just a, a great experience. Uh, it was showbiz in every way. You know, you get makeup beforehand, and you got these world class speakers coming off the stage right before you go on stage. Uh, it's just a really neat event. But I have actually the it's a, a six or seven minute talk, so you can check that out on my website too. It's at jimharshaw.net. There's a link right in the menu about why I teach my children to fail, and I really share a lot of uh, a lot about my 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 wrestling story there. Jim Harshaw shares the eight habits of successful former wrestlers, but more than anything, I think he's sharing life stories. As we get older, we forget what got us to where we are and how to improve on that. These days, you're working hard, but you're not getting what you want. Well, let Jim help redirect you. Let him uh, help reopen your eyes. You can find the podcast available at takedownwrestle.com. Uh, also, just by going to jimharshaw.net. Uh, Jim, you and I have been talking a number of years, and I've seen your life evolve as well. Tell us what you're doing with the University of Virginia. Yeah, so I work in development. Uh, basically, it's, a, it's sort of an administration role at the University of Virginia, and it's been really interesting to see to see Division One, big time Division One athletics from the perspective that I'm at now. And uh, so I'm, I'm a fundraiser. You know, we raise about thirty million dollars a year. It's a wow. lot of money, and and I see where that money comes from. I see where that money goes to. I see how wrestling is funded, how all of our Olympic sports are funded. And I tell you, it's uh, it's really eye opening. It's good to have wrestlers in this position. You got Joe Heskett in an administration position at West Virginia, uh, Matt Valenti at uh, University of Pennsylvania, and, and we're starting to get more wrestlers, I think, in these administration roles in, in higher education and athletics. And it's really important. But um, uh, you know, I. 
for every for every person out there that you know that, that's listening or watching this, if if you wrestled, give back, give back to your high school program, give back to your college program, support wrestling. Um, you know, certainly, I, I'm not an advocate of wrestling being a, a, just a charity, um, but when it comes to funding high school and college programs. Though they're nonprofits, they are they're non-revenue sports, and wrestling needs to really uh, make sure we're doing our part and giving back to those athletic programs that uh, that we love to watch their those college wrestlers because it's important. You know, um, you got baseball and tennis and lacrosse and soccer and all those alumni are expected to give back as well. And and I love to see it when when wrestlers are giving back at as high if not a higher level than a lot of those other sports. So that's really important. I encourage everybody to think about that. And perhaps that's the fulfillment of the purpose of why you wrestled in the first place. Let's face it, wrestling is a growth tool. It's something to help us uh, pass the time constructively, but it's also to help us grow as individuals. And I like that idea. I like what you said about you not seeing wrestling as a charity. Once we, as a sport, once we as a wrestling public, stop looking at ourselves as a charity, only then can we see ourselves successful. Agree? Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, there, there, there's, a, there's a place for, for wrestling as a charity when there are nonprofit events and whatnot, and that's great. Uh, but I'm also all for the business side of the sport, and I think you know, more business, the more businesses that depend on wrestling for their, for their, you know, to sustain that business, the, the healthier the sport is. Um, you know, the more people are, are not just invested in the sport uh, emotionally, but also financially, that's a good thing. You know, you look at uh, you look at the biggest sports in America, the biggest sports in the world. There's a lot of business around those, and uh, the more that we can create that around wrestling, I think the better. You know, people often talk about turning the new page in their book of life or a new chapter. I think you've found a new book. I think through this, your podcast, through. Uh, jimharshaw.net, your speaking engagements, uh, uh, your motivational speaking, et cetera, I think, and these interviews. The interviews, I think, help us open our eyes to as much as we are generally exposing the, uh, the interviewee to the general public and telling the stories. Uh, I think it helps us grow as well. That's one of the things I find so enjoyable uh, and have over the years on, on my radio shows and TV shows is getting to know these people because it helps me grow as a person. They're positive examples. All we need to do is ask the right questions and then listen. Yeah. Yeah. You got that right. You listen to a handful of my shows and, and you're going to learn that for sure. I mean, there's just so much to learn from these guys. And <clears throat> the interesting thing is, you know, you learn these, but you realize a lot of this stuff is already in you. Now, I'll give you an example. Dom Gorey, he was a, he's an astronaut. He was a, a fighter pilot and a Navy test pilot. I mean, this guy's insane. And, and he talks about, uh, he, he talks about climbing, he wrestled for the Naval Academy, but he talks about climbing into the cockpit of his fighter jet and thinking to himself, I've wrestled and, and I can do this. He, he's there, the, this thing's laden down with bombs and missiles and he's about to go fly in, into Iraq, which had to, at the time the third best air defense in the world. And now he's got to fly, you know, and, and, and do his job. And and he he leaned on his experience as a wrestler, having to step out on the mat by yourself, and, and certainly not a life and death environment, as he says. But it's 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 that same mentality, you know. Your your heart rate's up, the anxiety's up, and you've got to perform. You're on. And we all have that training. We all have the same training as some of the highest performing Top Gun pilots on the planet. And and, and all you know, you, me, and, and everybody else listening to this and watching this. We, we have this, the same thing in us. Recent posts include the interview with, uh, with Admiral uh, Donegan, uh, interview with Greg Hatcher, and, and Hatcher is a wonderful story in and of himself. Yeah. But I will tell you this, folks, you would uh, be remiss if you did not visit the website. You can connect with them on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and uh, Instant Messenger as well. But we encourage you to visit the website, jimharshaw.net where he says you can't get pinned when you're on top. Being on top means you also got to be a pretty good writer, and I think Jim Harshaw <laughs> is that indeed. Greg, or excuse me, Jim, thank you. And I want to thank you in speci uh, specifically for the Greg Hatcher interview. I, I found yeah, that so right. encouraging. He talks about sports. He talks about sales and a level of service. He calls it outrageous service. I happen to agree. Right. Uh, it's one of the best I've heard from him and with him. So thank you for that, and thank you for... Uh, joining us on Takedown today and joining us in the Nike hot seat. 
Yeah, well, thanks for having me on, Scott. This is great. Love what you do. Uh, keep promoting the sport. Keep making it easy for wrestling fans to be wrestling fans. And uh, the sport's going to continue to grow. So thank you. That's what we do, bud. We appreciate your efforts as well. Again, jimharshaw.net. He's been our guest today in the Nike hot seat. I'm Scott Casper, and thanks for watching.